Hi, it's your friend Brain. Before we start today's episode of Deck the Hallmark, this Win Calls the Heart episode, wanted to remind you that if you're watching this on Philo, thank you for doing so. Would you do us a favor and just tell everybody that you know that you're watching it on Philo? That'd be fantastic. Tell them how amazing Philo is and that you can watch Deck the Hallmark on it. Uh, they won't be disappointed. And if you are not watching us on Philo, if you're listening to the podcast right now, hello, good day, uh, would you consider giving Philo a shot? Philo.tv slash DTH. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Plus, you can watch this episode of Deck the Hallmark covering when calls the hearts right now. So head to Philo.tv slash DTH. Without further ado, let's get to some when calls the heart. Hi, it's Brand. <laughs> oh, I love oh, when calls oh. the heart, darn it. <laughs> Hi, yeah. it's Jack, wow. and I love when, oh, I like it, I like it, I love it, I want some more of it, <laughs> when calls the heart. Oh, 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 I try so hard, I cannot rise above it, not when calls the heart, I despise it, and this is the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. My name's Dan, Deck by the way. The <laughs> it's his <laughs> podcast. Dan, uh, it was Tim McGraw, though, so we got, I mean, come on. You know what I love about um, the theme song we've had for a few months now? What's that? We've never gotten one email complaining about it. It's unbelievable. It. People love it. They love it, and it's March. And it's, it's March. March. And we've had it since September, and not a single Not a single complaint. email And I thought, about. especially when Trace and Riggs sing. Yeah. You thought they wouldn't like that. Well, so you haven't had any complaints. How many, how many like positive emails have you gotten about it? Oh, so many. Oh yeah, Trace. Really? Yeah, I've made them all into NFTs. In <laughs> non fungible <laughs> land landmines. All right, that's NFL, <laughs> like National non Football. Non fungible League. toilets. <laughs> non fungible toilets. Yes. I know crypto. I know crypto. Trace Talks Crypto. Ooh, wow. Cue that clip. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trace Talks Crypto, where I give you crypto advice. First caller, hello. Oh, hello there, Tracy. <laughs> it's Hi. so good to see you. Is this the Cantor? It is the Cantor. The Cantor, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm sad that you are no longer talking on your technical program. Well, when but crypt this crypto sounds fun. Is it about caves? <laughs> no, it's not, it's not about caves. <laughs> is it about scary ghouls and monsters? No. I was expecting some really fun tales from the crypto. I see. No. <laughs> no, it's about cryptocurrency. What about it is... the occasional mummy? No. It's a digital currency. <laughs> but something's got to go boo or scare me, right? Do you have a question? <laughs> oh, I do. What? Where do I find this this stuff? Like, what? where are the caves that have these scary items in them? I'm going to choose to answer your confusing question with... If you want to buy cryptocurrency, you can get it on Robinhood. I would recommend getting Doge personally. I think it's all rise for Doge. Any more questions? I had a Nintendo Doge one time, but I did not know where the game console and the game itself were to connect. I just kept wondering, where do I stick it in? Right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> She got a serious XM contract right. for that show. And somehow Decanter's the only person that ever calls her. Yeah. It's clouds of Decanter. Haven't heard from When's him in the last in time we heard from Decanter. I uh, love that guy. No, I yeah. love that guy. He is. Yeah. He's something. Uh, he? Are you into crypto, Jax? No, no, I'm not into crypto. I know you're a big fan of the show, but it sounded like you'd never heard Decanter. No, uh, no, I, no uh, I was charmed by whatever that was. <laughs> Decanter? Yeah. Decanter. Yes, his, yeah, Decanter. his name is Decanter. His name is Decanter. I, I call him <laughs> Lil D. No, okay. we wouldn't. Okay. No, Decanter. Oh, no. Decanter. Oh, okay. uh, Jax, okay. what, what about uh, is... Uh, <laughs> Well, let's just keep going. When Calls the Heart Season 9, Episode 7, it's called Hope Valley Days Part 1, and it went on April 24th, 2022, and it went a little something like this. It's Picture Day for the Hope Valley Town Council, and they're all thrilled to be there. Almost as thrilled as Dan is to be here. Yeah! Uh, Frickham gives a speech where he- Hope he's Valley Days? All the holidays in one? Two episodes? Try and stop me? 
Frigum gives a speech where he says that this week is going to be the first annual Hope Valley Days, where they're going to celebrate four holidays in one week. Elizabeth is in charge of Thanksgiving. Florence and Ned are in charge of Hanukkah. This makes sense. Holiday Lee. days, Hope Valley. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Lee and Rosemary are in charge of Halloween. And uh, May is in charge of Valentine's Day. Elizabeth is giving the kids Thanksgiving assignments while Rosemary and Lee are dressed up for Halloween, and I guess they will be all week. Uh, she encourages Lee to write something nice about Frickham after the awful op-ed that he wrote the prior week, uh, however long ago the article it's came been. out. It's been. One week. Uh, such a world's op-ed. <laughs> uh, May, so many May, ways to go there. May is in uh, charge of uh, uh, all things love, and um, you can tell this by when she notices Lu- uh, Na- Nathan, not Lucas. When she you notices, don't need another one of those. No, no, no. Stop when it. she notices Nathan walking by the store, Faith is like, ain't nothing wrong with love, girlfriend. Um, a guy barges into Bill's office, and Bill is like, knock much? His name's Jeffrey. We know that name. Uh, and he says, my wife is in town, and she needs to be arrested. Bill says, leave and come back nicer. <laughs> Jeffrey refuses to leave. Next thing we know, Jeffrey is unconscious in a wheelbarrow outside. And no, I'm not making that up. Nathan tells Bill that there's no arrest warrants for Jeffrey, but there are many for May, including larceny and spousal abandonment. Uh Uh-oh. Nathan can tell that Bill is not surprised by this. He's like, why are you not surprised by this? And Bill says, "Uh, I may or may not be May's attorney, even though she told me not to tell anybody. Uh, Minnie tells Elizabeth that she is buying Abigail's half of the cafe. I didn't know it was up for grabs, but when in Rome. Uh, May sees Nathan on a horse. Did you say horse? Hey, you're back. I'm sorry. I was asleep. I'm catching up on sleep for my sabbatical. You're back, though. It's March, baby. March, baby. Welcome back. St. Patty's uh, Day. Yes. Fitzies. <laughs> Okay. It's a match made in heaven. We'll talk about that next week. Yeah. Uh, and um, Nay, she sees him on a horse and uh, smiles, but he does not smile back. Uh, he must be thinking she is one smooth criminal. Faith uh, asks Frickham for an x ray machine, and um, I feel like we've maybe. Did someone allude to that? Dude, this thing? is crazy that what? this happened this week. You came up last with week that. I just out of thin air was like, how about an x ray machine? And then it happened. He's like, you just really have your finger on the pulse of this show, though, I do, or the I do. lack I of could, pulse yeah, on yeah. the show. I could tell where they were going a mile away. Mm. He's like, no, no x-ray this time. How about you just invest in yourself instead of asking the town to do everything for you? Uh, okay. Boy, um, come. Bill is meeting with May, and he starts feeling a little bit wonky, so he leaves. He goes to Faith and faces, if only we had an x-ray machine. I have to send you to Union City. They're worried that he has pneumonia. Uh, Joseph and Minnie play uh, pray uh, that the bank is going to give them a loan. Robert comes to Lucas for some relationship advice. He wants to court someone. Who? We don't know yet, but I think her name might be Alec. Uh, it's time for Elizabeth to give Nathan his first driving lesson. He gets very bored very quickly because they're not doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there looking at all the knobs and whatnot. So he's like, I'll just ask Lucas to teach me. Bill finds May at the jail with news that they have found a marriage license with May's signature. And she's like, yeah, no, that's not real. I didn't do that. Bill has no choice but to let Jeffrey go, despite the fact that he's just rude. He's just a rude fellow. Uh, he tells, uh, is like, can you, will you please go? go back with me to Chicago and she refuses and says goodbye uh, Joseph is um, sad to, to when he finds out that the bank is not going to give him the loan Lee's not having it he calls up his banker and says you give them the money anonymously don't let them know this, that, it, that I'm not telling you uh, Rosemary thinks Lee maybe you should have talked to Joseph about that first maybe you should have talked about that um, Lucas encourages Nathan to maybe talk to May before he completely writes her off uh, before you know it, it's Hanukkah, and uh, we have a wonderful celebration where we get a, we find out. I don't know if you know about Hanukkah and what the lights mean and stuff, but we learn stuff. I've seen Hanukkah uh, movies. Minnie and Joseph <laughs> arrived with exciting news. <laughs> the bank approved their loan. We're at a bonfire, and Faith is burning the infirmary. Infer- 
the sign of the ephemerary. ephemerary sign. And I guess she's like, this is a, a, a sign of the future, but now no one's going to know where to go, so I don't know what's going on. But they all sit around the bonfire having a wonderful time, and that, my friends, was when Calls, calls a Hard Season 9, nine episode, episode 7, seven. Oh, Hope Valley Day, Day Part yeah. 1. Yeah, we did it. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back here on Dyke 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 Hallmark. Hallmark. Today's episode is brought to you by Philo. A reminder that you can watch all of Deck the Hallmark on Philo exclusively on the Philo. That's exactly right. The same platform that you watch all of your Hallmark movies on, you can also watch your boys doing their thing. Uh, so much. You can watch the Yellowstone. You can watch some reality. You can uh, watch some Lifetime. You can watch the Hallmark and so much more. Just check it out free trial what do you have to lose answer absolutely nothing what do you have to gain a whole heck of a lot uh please go to philo.tv slash dth check it out right now i think you're really gonna like it watch today's episode of deck the hallmark on it and so much more philo.tv slash dth hi everyone how are we Good? So good. Let's break this episode down. Let's start with a hot take. Let's start with you, Jax. What do you think about this episode of television? I'm back, baby. Oh, I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm having fun again. It's Hope Valley Days Part 1. <laughs> Sorry okay. about all those negative things she said last week, folks. The emails came rolling in. Jack said, not a banger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I just want to say I, I'm glad to be happy to be back in Hope Valley. Glad to be happy, aren't we all? And look, I need no excuse to put on a costume. We did it a few months ago, just sitting around. Oh, yeah, that was, I was. Gustav yeah. and a Mountie and Lucas. That was, uh, that was a month ago. That was about a month ago. Wow. And I do it again. I do it every day. And look, <laughs> does it make sense that we're celebrating four holidays? No, not really. Do I care? Definitely not. I love seeing Rosemary's Cleopatra and Lee as Mark Antony. I love when she sashays in the beginning and she says she's still in time for her cues. I am charmed by these people. I love that we get to see May Sue talk about love and that it's not just romantic love. I'm in for this episode. It's fun. You guys don't look like you're having fun. Oh, I'm having fun, girl. Right, how much fun are you having? Woman. What's your... <laughs> A person, <laughs> person, friend, Brand. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm having. I'm. I'm. Yes, this episode is absurd. I. Uh, I don't know how this episode came to be. There's four holidays in one. I don't like what time of year is it to where this makes sense. But nevertheless, yeah, sure, let's do this. This is at least where I'm having a fun time with this one, and I think I think everybody's having a fun time with this one. Dan. Oh my gosh. I, I honestly think that the Tinker Tinker's gonna take they have decided tinker, in season tinker. nine what they're gonna do is is they're gonna determine the scenes that are left on the cutting room floor. They're gonna determine those by random. <laughs> because there are, we need information that's just not given here. Like apparently Ned's Jewish. Apparently this is sometime in between October and February. But that's all the information we get. And we're not going to talk about Christmas. We're just going to choose four random holidays and celebrate them all at once, but only in certain areas of the town. I, it, this was a disaster. I, I, it was better than last week's. So put that on the DVD box of this one episode if you'd like to. Um, but, yeah, this was a mess. They made May Sue, who's the only Asian person in this show, they gave her the holiday that is right by... Chinese New Year, so that was an interesting choice. Um, yeah, there's a lot here that's bad, and then there's a lot here that doesn't make sense, and then what's left over is nothing. A good time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the feels. Any feels for you, Jax? I, I did have some feels. Um, so in the driving scene with Nathan and Elizabeth, I thought it was really fun and playful, and I know they're trying to cultivate that friendship chemistry and that's a thing but you got to see them really bring a lot of levity and uh -huh. i thought it was quirky and fun so i got some feels there yeah um i also d oh go sorry. no go go no i actually i'll save that for my wait what because it's more of a wait what because my feel is anger so i'll save it for wait okay, what okay 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think if I had any like specific uh, feels in this episode. I mean, I do like holidays, so like, I guess holiday feels, but like also not clear. Maybe confusion feels. Um, that's probably. Oh, I yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah no. Um, happy birthday, Jax. It's your birthday. Thank you, Holly. She's my Holly, bestie ever Holly since Bramble that. Fest. That's right. And I'm going to take that as my feels. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back here on Deck the Hallmark. Get with the program. Oh, hey, everybody. It's Brand. Uh, let's talk about this episode. Let's get to the wait what's. Jax, any wait what's for you? Yeah. So my wait what, we all know I'm at. Frickin' Hickam fan. Mm. And I'm really disappointed with him in this episode, you guys. Um, he's doing this whole sort of like mentality of like the pull yourself up by your bootstraps, make mm. it on your own mentality, which is really problematic in general because the amount of people that move outside of the socioeconomic class that they were born in is so small, but that's mm. neither here nor there. And that's a different podcast. But the stuff that he says to faith about having to do it all on her own. Yes. It's great to be independent and make it on your own. But I do think that it is the town's responsibility, even if she isn't a private practice to maybe contribute some money to making their town doctor's office, even though it's not technically an infirmary because it's not public anymore. It's not private better. So yeah, Hickam, I'm disappointed in you. And it is easier for a man to do that stuff than a woman, well, especially in 1919. Is I it would like just say Hickam gives his own story of, I started out working here and then I worked here mm -hmm. and then I became in charge of blah, blah, blah. And my response would be like, in all all that time, did anyone come up to you and go like, I don't know if I trust you because you're a woman, li like happened to faith last episode where Gowan, two episodes ago, where Gowan comes up and goes, I don't want a woman doing my physical. Did that happen once to you, Hickam? Okay. Then since it didn't, maybe your situation should be left in your own head and let's figure out something better to make the town better right now. Preach. Or and has anybody asked you for an x-ray? <laughs> It's true. Like, Dan, you should be wearing that this is what a feminist looks like t-shirt right now. If you buy me one, I'll wear it. I will. Um, I'll I might, wear it on the uh, show. Maybe I'll do it in a few months. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had to start paying for moon flights. We haven't moon talked about flights. Ted lately. We haven't talked about Ted. Ten season 10. We got to do it. Um, just to circle back to that, not that we need to, but I'm curious. When Gowan said he didn't want a woman to do it, I actually thought he had some insecurities with his own personhood. Yeah, I didn't take that as not trusting. I took it I as... I took it both. Uh, I actually thought both ways. I was like, does he not trust I mean, a woman or is he insecure? Considering about how women own? couldn't vote yet. Yeah, that's true. I was pretty sure he was like, yeah, I want a male doctor. That's Give me doctors or men. Like, that's that's how I took it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Me as a villain. Well, sort of. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was my... What the... What? Wait, hey? what? Wait, what? Wait, Guys, what? What's up, with, doing this what's up with prunes? prunes i know i have maybe one. talked about this before but i don't even remember last week. who says prunes when you're taking a picture i think it's because you're doing that uh, the, the little pouty face prune the pouty face was a thing in 1919 you're saying prune. Prune. where do you think we got it from Dan? you have pictures of your great <laughs> yes. your great grandparents great great grandparents who were just all going doing prune. the duck lips yeah 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 that's prunes. fair mm, yes prunes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to know why these specific holidays were chosen. It's They're all in that six-month or four-month window. No, not three-month window. From Actually, October April 31st to February 14th. April is, Fool's Day, though. April Fool's Day was in there? And Bill Avery was April Fool's. What? I know. Okay. But I thought that was make like a joke. I thought it was a joke. Oh, it was a joke. Was a joke. I think it was like a funny ha-ha. Oh, well, I'm the fool. It worked out. Yeah, but speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of Bill... What happened with Bill and Jeffrey? Like, Jeffrey yeah. closes the door. Oh, that was it, the other one. It like, you cuts can't... to Jeffrey being in a wheelbarrow completely knocked out. They don't have any answers. Like, either they, they did what I said, which is they just deleted the scenes that made all this made sense just for time, or they're just like, oh, we don't have time to explain this. We'll just put it all out there and then hope people like it. That's a that was a weird cut. It, like we were, we, all of us were like, "Wait, what?" Like literally out loud when that happened. I don't know wh what in the world was going on there. Dan, I want to go. I've only got one, and I want to go back to the X-ray machines briefly. Let's okay. take out the fact 
that there's a complete lack of understanding of the difference between the plight of faith and Hickam and like act mm-hmm. like we already covered that because we did. Hickam's response to her before he gives her a history lesson on his own employment, his <laughs> his first response to her is is that I basically can't favor you. Like if everybody came and asked me for something, I can't just give it to you because I like you. Bro, one person's asking for a machine that could save lives. That is not the same as Lucas asking for more kegs of beer or the newspaper asking for another printing press. This could save lives. It's not like you're like, well, am I choosing between helping this baker or this baker? You're choosing between saving lives and helping a community be healthier or anything else that's less important. And I, I couldn't believe that that was the answer. For all the stuff they write in in this episode, in this in the last two seasons mm-hmm. about yeah. uh, go to church if you want to and stand up for yourself and you're beautiful on the inside and you can do anything you set your mind to and women can own three or four businesses and blah, blah, blah. And then when it comes to this scene, it's like, what, what happened? Yeah, x-ray machines are as important as any other business in this town. No, 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 not true at all. That was my only way. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's time for hopes and valleys. Any hopes for you, Jax? Or maybe just some valleys? I don't know. Uh, no, I'm hopeful that I will get to see my gal, Pascal Hutton, just surprise and delight us for the rest of the season. I want to, I just want a whole show of her. And I think Dan feels the same. Yeah. I, listen, you and I have talked you about do love this Pascal. Over, over months now. Uh, yes. And early Rosemary, Pascal Hutton's a great actress. Early Rosemary was insufferable to me. Like, that early dynamic of, I'm an actor, Lee can't do anything right. Hey, Lee, I redid all this for you over and over again, and he keeps getting annoyed, and it's just this back and forth that seems to never end. The last two and a half seasons of Rosemary are at least, like, much better than, although now we're starting to swing back there with the newspaper thing, which I'm worried about. Because, like, when they were working separately and it was, like, she had some, like, a lot, some dramatic issues and things, She it was much more tolerable for me than, than the early seasons were. So See, I, I, I see the I think, newspaper and I get excited. I think that uh, <laughs> what happened is um, when Elizabeth was uh, a bit of a witch last uh, season and, like, we started cheering for rosemary in that whole situation yes, where she was being mean true, to rosemary right? yeah that i think it. that i think that flipped it for you dan i think it, it made yeah. it a little bit more sympathetic yes, which hasn't it happened it did because so. she spoke truth and did it correctly there you go and yeah um my hope is that um we're gonna we get another one of these episodes i don't know how they're gonna do it because we have that's not a hope brand we do get another one of these episodes yeah, i hope that maybe we get four more holidays good <laughs> grief <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's get crazy. Uh, Dan? No. Okay. No, just get me. <laughs> Pass. Do, do you have a what's calling my heart? I do have one of those. Right. Uh, you can tell us what's calling your heart. Email us hello at deckthehallmark.com. This is from Martin Lilienthal, my boy Martin. Uh, Martin's wife, Elizabeth, helps run a few things around the here. Best. Uh, Martin says, hey, guys, spouse of a double decker here. I have to say what's been calling my heart recently is my wife's multiple attempts to tell me about something you've said or was posted on the Double Decker page or even some of the bits you do. She does her best, but is usually laughing too hard to get a full explanation out. Get, let her give decanter a shot, Martin. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if anyone's I, laughing at decanter. No, no one. No one. I think that's what I'm saying is she can get through it. I don't mind. It's great to see her having so much fun. I still have no idea what the heck is going on, but keep at it. And thanks for creating a wonderful community of folks. Merry Christmas, Martin Lilienthal. Oh, we love you, Martin. Oh, God, thank thank you, you, pal. He's the best. Uh, what a wonderful day today has been. Another week. And guess what? We get to do it all over again, but only a few more episodes left in this season. Then we get a little break. We'll have a little break. Unbelievable. That's amazing. Seems like just yesterday. We were in the the middle of season eight. Two days ago, tops. Uh, Guys, let's take uh, take a break uh, for a week, and we'll be back (laughs) with another one. Until then, we'll be the first to wish you a Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks and Bramble Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial, of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH.
You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep, here they are. Happy day.